वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ किशोर फरडे मेकॅनिकल इंजिनिअरिंग डिपार्टमेंट शिवाजीराव एजंद पॉलिटेक्निक असमगाव इन दिस व्हिडिओ आय एम गोईंग टू एक्सप्लेन सुपर चार्जिंग अँड डिफरंट मेथड्स ऑफ सुपर चार्जिंग द लर्निंग आउटकम्स द लर्नर विल अंडरस्टँड द नीड ऑफ सुपर चार्जिंग अल्सो learner will able to explain construction and working of supercharger and learner will get familiar with different methods of supercharging let us see what is supercharging supercharging is the process of increasing the mass or density of air fuel mixture in case of si engine or air in case of ci engine sucked into the cylinder it is done with the help of compressor or the blower called as a supercharger in case of si engine means petrol engine it is mounted before carburetor which reduces the size of carburetor now object is a supercharging the prime objective of the supercharging is to increase the brake power of output per mass of fuel consumed per weight of engine the secondary objectives are to reduce the weight of engine per brake power as required in case of aircraft to reduce the space occupied by the engine as required in case of marine engines to reduce the consumption of lubricating oil in case of all types of engines also the to increase the power output of output of an engine by increasing density of the charge at intake when greater power is required as required in case of racing cars then to maintain the power of aircraft engine in high altitudes where the less oxygen is available for combustion and to increase thermal and mechanical efficiency so reflection limitations there are some limitations of supercharging high initial cost because the engine parts are subjected to higher thermal and mechanical stresses due to higher operating pressure therefore construction of engine has to be robust and sturdy which leads to high initial cost second concern with reliability due to higher mean effective pressure it reduces it res- results in higher temperature so therefore due to higher temperature the reliability of life of some parts like piston top exhaust valves etc are adversely affected reflection spot dear students Pause the video, think, and note down the answer. State different methods of supercharging. So, you will get the answer of reflection spot here. The methods of supercharging: first, gear-driven supercharger, turbocharger, coupled engine, compressor, and turbine. free piston engines and separately driven compressor so now we will discuss all these methods in detail the first method is gear driven supercharger in this method the engine and compressor both are coupled with the help of step up gearing and the part of engine output is used to run the compressor the second method that is turbocharging in this method the energy extracted from the exhaust gases by the turbine is utilized to drive the supercharger that is centrifugal compressor so we know 
about 30% of heat goes out through the exhaust gas as a waste. These also depend upon the type of engine and operating conditions. So this waste heat is utilized to run the turbine and that turbine output is used to run the compressor. So this gas turbine is directly coupled to the centrifugal compressor. So in turbocharging, the engine exhaust is given to the turbine. This turbine and compressor are coupled together with at same shaft. So this turbine output is used to run the compressor. So whenever the atmospheric air will enter to the compressor, it will get compressed to high pressure and high temperature. And this compressed air will be entered into the charge cooler to maintain the temperature. And then this air will enter into the engine. So this is the working cycle for turbocharging. The next method. Before next method, we will discuss advantages of turbocharging. It will reduce the pollution from exhaust gases. Reduce the fuel consumption. Reduction in power loss due to decrease in air density at higher altitudes. Also, the turbocharging increases the power output of engine. More power to weight ratio and better torque characteristics can be achieved with the help of turbocharging. Now the next method is coupled engine compressor and turbine. Here the engine, compressor and turbine all are coupled together with the gearing. If the output of the gas turbine is not sufficient to run the compressor, then the engine can supply the additional power to the compressor and if the gas turbine output is more than the required to compress the air in this case the extra power of the turbine is fed to the engine the next method is a free piston engine so here the engine supplies total power to drive the compressor. Engine supplies the total power to drive the compressor and the exhaust gases from the engine and exhaust gases from the engine drives a turbine to give the power output. So we will get the turbine output. So in free piston engine, total power from the engine is given to the compressor and exhaust gases of the, from the engine is utilized to drive the turbine to give the output. And the last method is separately driven compressor. As the name itself suggests that in separately driven compressor, the Outside supply source such as an electric motor is used to run the compressor. So in this way, we had discussed all the methods of supercharging. In MSBT exam, the questions will ask, what is supercharging? What is the necessity of supercharging? state the different methods of supercharging and explain any one of them in detail. So I hope after watching this video, you can able to answer these questions. So dear students, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Thank you.